Picture a world gripped by ice. The Eurasian steppe stretches out, a frozen wasteland where the wind screams and snow falls in relentless sheets. Temperatures plummet to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and for six long months, winter rules with an iron fist. A modern human dropped into this unforgiving landscape without shelter or heat wouldn't last a day. Yet 30,000 years ago, our Paleolithic ancestors didn't just survive these brutal conditions, they thrived. Families raised children, crafted intricate tools, and created art that still captivates us today. No insulated houses no central heating, no high-tech gear, just stone tools, animal hides, and a brilliant understanding of their environment. So how did they do it? How did they turn the harshest winters in human history into a stage for survival and ingenuity? This is the story of the Paleolithic people who became Arctic engineers, building shelters so clever they rival modern designs. Let's dive into their world and uncover the secrets that let them conquer the Ice Age. The popular image of early humans during the Ice Age is simplistic, a ragged family huddling around a fire in a cave's mouth, shivering against the cold. But that's only half the story. Caves were rare and many Paleolithic groups lived far from them, out on the open steppe or in sparse forests. Archaeological evidence paints a far more impressive picture. These people didn't just endure winter, they mastered it, creating shelters that harnessed nature's own forces, snow, wind, earth, and bone to keep them warm. From mammoth bone houses in Ukraine to snow caves in Siberia, their survival tech was a testament to human resilience and innovation. Their guiding principle was revolutionary. When the environment tries to kill you, make it work for you instead. Let's start with one of the earliest examples of cold weather engineering, found at Kostroma, Russia, dating back a staggering 800,000 years. Here, early humans dug circular pits, some 8 feet deep and 12 feet across, to create semi-subterranean homes. These weren't random holes in the ground. They were carefully planned to exploit the Earth's natural insulation. By digging below the frost line, the depth where the ground stays frozen year-round, they tapped into soil that was 20 to 30 degrees warmer than the air above. In a world where surface temperatures could drop to deadly lows, this was a game-changer. Tool marks and soil analysis show these depths were chosen deliberately, not by chance. These pioneers understood thermodynamics long before science gave it a name using the Earth itself as a shield against the cold. Fast forward to 26,000 years ago at Dolny Vestenice in the Czech Republic, and we see insulation systems that would make modern builders take notes. These shelters had walls built like high-performance winter gear, with layers designed for specific purposes. The innermost layer was animal hides carefully prepared with the fur facing inward to trap body heat close to the occupants. Outside that, a layer of dried grass and moss acted like a sponge, wicking away moisture to keep the interior dry and prevent frost buildup. The outermost layer was woven mats made from reeds and bark, forming a windproof barrier that still allowed water vapor to escape. This prevented condensation from turning into ice inside the shelter, which could have been a death sentence. These layered walls weren't just functional. They were a masterpiece of material science, a technique so advanced it wasn't rediscovered until modern times. But the crown jewel of Paleolithic winter survival comes from the mammoth bone houses of Ukraine and Russia, found at sites like Mezhurich and Kostenki, built between 25,000 and 15,000 years ago. These weren't simple huts slapped together for temporary shelter. They were sophisticated, engineered homes designed to house extended families of 8 to 12 people through the worst winters imaginable. Construction began with a foundation. Builders dug oval or circular pits 12 to 16 feet in diameter and piled the excavated earth into berms around the edges. These berms acted as windbreaks and added thermal mass, helping to stabilize the shelter's temperature. The framework was where things got really impressive. These people used the bones of woolly mammoths, creatures perfectly adapted to the cold themselves, 
to build their homes. Massive skulls, some weighing over 200 pounds, served as foundation blocks. Curved tusks and long bones formed a dome-shaped frame, while smaller bones filled in gaps for structural support. Radiocarbon dating reveals a surprising detail. Many of these bones weren't from freshly hunted mammoths. Instead, builders scavenged them from boneyards, collecting materials systematically like architects planning a project. This wasn't just survival, it was resource management on a whole new level. Over this bone framework, they layered a covering system that showcased their textile ingenuity. The outer layer was thick mammoth hides, sewn together with sinew thread using bone needles. These hides were tough and weather-resistant, forming a structural shell. Inside, layers of smaller pelts, wolf, fox, arctic hare, added insulation, creating a warm, cozy interior. The entire system was anchored to the bone frame with hide straps and bone toggles, ensuring it could withstand the steps' ferocious winds. Building one of these houses took weeks of coordinated effort, typically in late summer or early fall, before winter made outdoor work impossible. Experimental archaeology suggests a team of 8 to 10 adults could complete one in 2 to 3 weeks, showing incredible planning and teamwork. Heating these shelters was a challenge. In a treeless environment where wood was scarce, Paleolithic people got creative, developing alternative fuels that were both abundant and efficient. They burned mammoth dung, dried grasses, and even bones, processing them to maximize heat output. Chemical analysis of hearth residues shows they knew how to prepare these fuels for clean, long-lasting burns. Central hearths provided the main heat source, radiating warmth throughout the shelter, while smaller fires around the perimeter created hot zones for tasks like cooking or crafting tools. This multi-hearth system wasn't just about staying warm, it was about optimizing every bit of fuel in a resource-scarce world. 30,000 years ago Survival meant building shelters from mammoth bones. Today, survival on YouTube is easier. Just hit that subscribe button and join us for more unbelievable survival stories. Ventilation was just as critical as heat. Without proper airflow, moisture from breathing and cooking would condense and freeze, turning a shelter into an icy tomb. At sites like Kostenki Archaeologists, found evidence of brilliantly designed ventilation systems. Small vents near the ground let in fresh air, while larger openings near the roof allowed warm, humid air to escape. This created natural convection currents, keeping the air fresh without sacrificing heat. Some shelters even had adjustable flaps made of bone and hide, letting occupants tweak airflow based on the weather. This level of sophistication is something modern Arctic engineers still strive for, and our ancestors nailed it with nothing but natural materials. Life inside these shelters was a masterclass in organization. They were built for extended families, with distinct zones for different activities. Sleeping areas clustered around the central hearth, with the warmest spots reserved for infants and elders, the most vulnerable members of the group. Secondary hearths lit up areas for tool making, where good light and warmth were essential for detailed work. Food storage was another stroke of genius. In permafrost regions, they dug underground chambers connected to the main shelter by short tunnels. These acted like natural refrigerators, keeping meat frozen but accessible even during blizzards. This ensured a steady food supply through the long winter months, no matter how harsh the storms. Maintaining these shelters was a constant task. Hides tore, bones broke, and insulation wore out. Archaeological evidence shows occupants were proactive, patching coverings, replacing structural bones, and refreshing grass and moss layers to keep the shelter performing at its best. This wasn't just reactive fixes. It was ongoing engineering to improve their home's efficiency as winter dragged on. Winters were long and dark, and being cooped up for months could take a mental toll. Paleolithic people didn't just survive, they found ways to thrive. Many shelters doubled as creative spaces. Archaeologists have found Venus figurines, carved tools, and portable art objects in these contexts, suggesting the long winter months were a time for storytelling, crafting, and artistic expression. These activities weren't just hobbies. 
They were psychological lifelines, keeping spirits high and communities tight-knit during months of isolation. When spring arrived, many groups dismantled their shelters, caching valuable materials like bones and hides for the next year. Bone frameworks were often buried under earth and stones to protect them from scavengers ready to be reused. This cyclical approach shows a deep understanding of seasonal rhythms in resource conservation. Experimental reconstructions of these shelters have blown modern researchers away. A well-built mammoth bone house could keep its interior 40 to 50 degrees warmer than the outside air, using only small fires. That's performance on par with modern Arctic shelters, which rely on industrial materials and advanced tech. The impact of this technology went beyond survival. It allowed humans to colonize vast swaths of northern Eurasia, regions that would have been uninhabitable without these shelters. Access to new hunting grounds and resources fueled population growth and cultural innovation. The techniques developed for shelters, layered materials, insulation, structural engineering, found their way into clothing, tools, and weapons. The need to pass down this complex knowledge likely drove the development of teaching methods and cultural practices, ensuring critical survival skills were preserved across generations. If our ancestors could endure freezing winds and endless winters, I'm sure you can survive the effort of clicking subscribe right now. Different regions adapted these techniques to their unique challenges. Coastal Arctic groups built on permafrost, designing foundations to stay stable on shifting ground. Steppe dwellers focused on wind resistance, using berms and tight hide coverings to deflect gales. Mountain communities engineered shelters to withstand avalanches, while forest edge groups integrated natural windbreaks like trees into their designs. This adaptability shows a deep understanding of local environments, tailored to specific conditions. As the Ice Age ended and climates warmed, the need for such extreme shelters faded. Forests spread, and many of these techniques were abandoned, surviving only in the harshest Arctic regions. It's one of the great losses of human history, but modern engineers are rediscovering these ideas. Military Arctic training programs now teach shelter-building methods inspired by Paleolithic designs. Disaster relief teams use these principles for emergency shelters in extreme environments. The ingenuity of our ancestors is still saving lives today. This story isn't just about survival. It's about human brilliance. Faced with a world that seemed determined to wipe them out, Paleolithic people didn't retreat. They innovated. They turned mammoth bones into architecture, snow into insulation, and fire into a lifeline. They weren't primitive cave dwellers. They were Arctic engineers, crafting warmth and safety with nothing but their wits and the materials around them. Every time you bundle up against the cold or step into a warm home, you're tapping into principles they pioneered. Their legacy is etched in every cozy corner we create against winter's bite. So here's to our ancestors, the first to conquer the ice, proving that no environment is too harsh when you've got ingenuity on your side.